Welcome to this video on Seemings from the tabletop role-playing game Changeling The Lost. Changelings are humans who were kidnapped and taken to Arcadia by the true Fae. Their souls were twisted and remade to better serve their keepers before they effected their escape. A seeming is how a changeling's Fae nature manifests itself. Most of the time this is shared with the hated Fae who imprisoned the changelings. But sometimes a fae will turn their changeling servants into something different from themselves. Further complicating the matter are the kiths, subcategories of seemings that occasionally manifest in changelings, indicative of some specialized attention or duty imposed on them by the keepers. But without further ado, the changeling seemings. Beasts the beasts are changelings who were carried off into Arcadia and transformed into something resembling animals, their reasoning and memory stripped away to live in an eternal present of sensation. And while there is some joy in the vivid, simple, and spontaneous existence of an animal, a beast changeling knows that something is very wrong, that they are supposed to be able to think. But if the creatures that brought them to Arcadia realize that their pets are not playing the part correctly, they will be punished until conscious thought fades back into pure instinct. Yet some beasts do regain their minds, just long enough to flee, to escape through the hedge, and regain control. Changelings who become beasts were usually wanderers, loners, or innocents, who journey too far away from the eyes of other mortals, but not far enough from the eyes of the Fae, who tempted the soon-to-be changeling with the promise of sensation and fulfillment, and even went so far as to trick their victims into thinking that their captivity in Arcadia was decided by their own free will. But innocence is not weakness, as those who deal with animals quickly learn. Beasts learn to recognize patterns, but refuse to be fully broken by the Fae, which is how they retain the strength to escape from Arcadia. Regardless of what shape the beast had in Arcadia, in the mortal world they become creatures of contradiction, trying to balance their mortal, rational selves against their animal, amoral selves. Beasts returned from Arcadia take different paths to reconcile themselves with the animal within. Some hold themselves completely apart from humans. Others act as beacons of wildness within civilization and call others to indulge in a more instinctual way. Beasts mean and their human forms are always connected, whether subtly or overtly. And while no changeling is going to have fur, tufted ears, or a tail in human form, a goat-like changeling will be afflicted with persistent stubble and unconquerable body hair. An elephant changeling might be stout and have unusually large ears. A lion beast might be square-jawed, muscular, and extremely indolent during the day. Beasts tend to lean heavily towards physicality, but that physicality depends on their seeming and affinity. A changeling with a gorilla seeming would be more strength oriented, where a rabbit seeming beast would be dexterity oriented, and a wolf seeming changeling would focus on stamina. Beasts share a kinship with the animals of the natural world, which allows them to more easily calm and train them. This kinship is heightened with animals that share seemings with the beasts. Beasts are also blessed with a kind of animal magnetism and can convert their glamour into greater personal presence when dealing with others. A beast time in Arcadia robs them of some of their higher cognitive abilities, and this makes it difficult for them to focus on more mental tasks. However, they compensate for this with the ability to make certain inductive leaps using only raw intelligence. The broadback kith of beasts are those who can use the gift of stoic forbearance in order to heighten their stamina. The hunter heart kith are beasts who can use the tooth and claw gift to transform their hands and feet into claws and talons for use against their enemies. The runner swift kith are beasts who, as the name suggests, can use run like the wind to outpace nearly any natural creature while on foot. The skitter skulk kith are beasts who can use impossible counterpoise to mimic the visual acuity and agility of insects in order to better dodge attacks. The steep scrambler kith are beasts who can use gifted climber to ascend any solid surface, no matter how sheer and smooth, so long as it can naturally support their weight. The swimmer skin kith are beasts who can use the natural swimmer gift to hold their breath for a superhumanly long period of time, as well as swim at high speeds. The venom bite kith are beasts who can use the poisonous bite gift to afflict any enemy with a powerful toxin equal in strength to their weird. 
The wind-winged kith are beasts who can use the gift of the sky to glide and dive with the currents of the air. Darklings Have you ever heard the saying that curiosity killed the cat? A darkling is proof that the cat got off easy. Darklings were mortals who drew the attention of the fae because they were too curious and sought to know things that were better left undisturbed. They looked into the dark, and the dark looked back at them, liked what it saw, and decided to add the mortal to its collection, dragging them screaming through the hedge into Arcadia. The Fae then injected darkness into the very being of said mortal, creating a new darkling. A darkling's memory of Arcadia is filled with fear of things in the dark, things that slither and skitter and crawl over their naked flesh, of labyrinths without end, of being locked in dark rooms and forgotten, of shadows towering in the few faint lights allowed to exist, and of being set to tasks of reading and copying endless pages of seemingly nonsensical words and symbols. In the end, the Darkling finds that it is safer in the dark with the things that crawl and slither, rather than to see them in the light as they truly are. A Darkling's escape from Arcadia is the most arduous, according to them, as they have no light to guide them through the hedge, no point of reference to lead them back to the human world. Instead, they had to slip through the shadows of the hedge, in spaces too small for the Fae to follow them, until they returned to the world. The Darklings are the least physically imposing of the Changelings. However, they are quick and resolute, necessary talents when surviving the whims of the Fae who lurk in the dark corners of Arcadia. As their name might suggest, the Darklings' magic is most potent at night, and weakens when the sun is in the sky. This weakness only grows when a darkling is actually physically exposed to the sun. Darklings of the antiquarian kith conceal themselves in the darkest and dustiest archives and hold the gift, the keys to knowledge, which gives them eidetic memory and the ability to find nearly any piece of lore they might require, given enough time. The grave white kith are the companions of the dead, aided by the gift of charnel sight which allows them to see the restless dead, though the dead are not obliged to interact with the grave white darkling in any way. The leech finger kith use the gift of sap the vital spark to chip and drain the life force of humans one mote at a time in order to restore themselves. Thankfully, this gift is limited to the strength of the darkling's weird, and also they're kind of horning in on the vampire's business. Darklings of the mirror skin kith are able to hide in plain sight with the Mercurial Visage gift, which allows them to change their bones and skin to mirror any person they've met, even once. The Tunnel Grub Kith possess the gift of Slither and Squirm, which enables them to slip their bodies through spaces and passages only just too small for them to fit through otherwise. This also includes the ability to escape from any restraints. Elementals You can never go home again. Elemental changelings are regarded as abnormal, even by their own kind. Where other changelings represent the dreams and nightmares of living creatures, elementals are the embodiments of the forces of nature. Their desire, if they can be described at all, is to soar, flow, roil, and burn. And the Fae who made the elementals are stranger still, but one thing is true. The elemental keepers do not forgive betrayal or abandonment. So elementals cannot return to their mortal lives, but they certainly cannot return to Arcadia. Elementals were usually targeted by the Fae, who desired to possess them, or had a need for their talents. Elementals returned from Arcadia retained the skills that drew the Fae's eye to them, but now, as they are altered by the elements, they are changed. The elemental guardian of water moves fluidly, finding imperceptible gaps in his enemy's defenses and hammering them in relentless waves of crushing power. An elemental musician of air's song carries to every corner of a room he is in, sounding as if he is playing right beside the listener, and only for them. An elemental demagogue of fire whips mobs of formerly disinterested onlookers into a righteous fury, ready to reduce his foes into ruin. The elemental sculptor of earth seems to coax form from stone so lifelike that his admirers swear that they expect his statues to step down from their pedestals and walk away. Elementals differ from other changelings who are altered by living and laboring in Arcadia. 
Instead, elemental changelings were purposely transformed into part of the environment of Arcadia, into the land, air, water, flames, and even other things. An elemental's memories of their time in Arcadia are surreal, for they remember being trees, and stones, and mannequins, and snow, and streams, and even wildfires. The elementals have a strong connection to the primal forces of the world and can use those forces to protect themselves from harm. The stronger an elemental's weird is, the more of that element they can channel to give them greater vitality in order to resist damage that would kill lesser changelings. The drawback to this is that elementals have had a bit more of their humanity cut out of them by the Fae and replaced with the particular substance or element which now sits at the core of their being. This makes it difficult for them to empathize or socialize with humans, even if they wish to. The air-touched kith move with the velocity of Zephyr. The stronger their weird, the faster they can move. The Earthbones kith are gifted with terrestrial might, which reinforces their considerable strength with glamour, though they cannot do so in the chaos of battle. The Fireheart kith possess the flickering acumen ability, which enhances their mental faculties with a proportional investment of glamour. The mannequin kith have the gift of the artificer's enchantment, which decreases the time it takes for them to learn new contracts of artifice, as well as to practice crafts in which they are untrained. The snowskin kith are blessed with the voice of ice, which either inspires terror at all who hear the arctic chill in their voices, or conceals their intentions beneath a placid mask of casual indifference. The waterborne kith possess the gift of water, which allows them to breathe underwater and swim at twice their normal movement speed. However, water is a jealous mistress, who refuses to allow them to leave until her gift expires. If they try to, or are forced to, they will begin to suffocate until they are returned to the water. The wood blood kith possess the blessings of fade into the foliage. Anywhere plants grow from the earth, the wood blood has an easier time of sneaking surviving, and hiding. Fairest Who is the fairest of them all? The fairest consider themselves both the best and unluckiest of changelings, because the true fae who kidnapped them had all of the powers of that peculiar race, but also the whimsicality of immortal, alien beings. This works out to acts of grand sadism, which always end in beautiful tragedy, to satisfy the peculiar tastes of the Fae. The fairest are often the targets of their lord's games in the mortal world long before being taken to Arcadia to enjoy the pleasures and agonies that the mind of a Fae can conjure up. The fairest soon learn that their masters wish to be loved, adored, worshipped, and that to be loved is to have power over the one who gives love, and that the one who is loved also has the right to use that love however they choose. The part of Arcadia that the fairest fled, try saying that three times fast, was both a paradise and a hell. Realms filled with beauty that could turn into scenes of mind-shattering horror at the whim of the Keeper. For the fairest, the memories of the pain they suffered drives them forward towards the hedge and back into the mortal world. The fairest continue to hold on to that pain and use it to ignore and hope that they will forget the pleasures that the Fae inflicted on them. Not all of the fairest who were carried off by the Fae were chosen to be their lovers. Some were artists or entertainers. However, by the time they emerged from the hedge, many of the fairest find that what was once their proudest skill has turned into an all-consuming obsession, both from the overconfidence that mastery gives them and a quiet sense of self-doubt. What if, rather than escaping from Arcadia, they were simply discarded, their beauty their voices, their talent, insufficient to hold the interests of their former Fey masters. What if they truly weren't the fairest of them all, and instead were simply cast aside and ignored? The fairest scant memories of their time in Arcadia are combinations of the heights of euphoria, interspersed with unspeakable torments, romantic fantasies which transformed into terrors best suited to some unimaginable hell. The perfect lover shifted into the perfect torturer, turned pleasure into pain, then into pleasure again, and back into pain. By the time one of the fairest awakens in the mortal world, screaming, he 
he can't quite remember if it was from suffering or satisfaction. The fairest bring back some of the capricious cruelty of their former masters with them. Beneath their charm, their wit, their charisma, is a capacity to hurt and keep hurting others, not out of malice, though it often appears that way. Most of the time, it is an impulse, a passing storm that can batter anyone who comes too near. The fairest struggle mightily against this, to unite and bring others together, because there is one thing the fairest cannot take, and that is to be alone, unloved, and forgotten. Of all the changelings, the fairest fey means are most reflected in their mortal seemings. Even when not beautiful, the fairest are always striking and unforgettable. The fairest can use glamour to improve their natural presence, manipulation, and persuasion. Additionally, the fairest may use social skills without penalties for lack of training. The fairest share some of the more unsavory characteristics of their former fey masters as stated before being that they can be pitiless, even towards loved ones. They have a hard time retaining clarity, especially if they kill or harm other changelings. Fairest of the Bright One's kith are creatures of light, and fittingly may utilize the gift of goblin illumination, creating an orb of pale soft light, bright enough to fill a small room. But with the expenditure of glamour, a Bright One can increase the intensity of their light into a blinding force. The Dancer Kith hold the gift of Fey Grace, which grants them preternatural agility and coordination whether performing, dancing, or dodging attacks. The Draconic Kith are blessed with the Dragon's Talon, which gives their fists the force of said creature. The Flowering Kith have the gift of seductive fragrance. Their scent soothes and charms those who smell it, which makes efforts to persuade others much easier. The Muse Kith possesses the gift the tyranny of ideas. A muse can grant any human in his presence the confidence to engage in creative or social activities that they might not otherwise have been able to. Ogres. Violence begets violence. Ogres understand this better than any other changeling. The fey who claimed them were creatures of unthinking brutality and taught their mortal captives to live brutally, think in brutish terms, until they became brutes themselves just to survive. And ogre's masters beat them mercilessly, force them to work until they collapse, and feed those too weak to continue to their fellow slaves. But a changeling ogre learns his lessons well and quickly, and uses violence to smash their master's shackles, break through the locked cages they are held in, defeat his master's servants, and to club and cudgel their way through the hedge, back to the mortal world. Ogres are often benumbed to violence and savagery, and see them as the shortest distance between two points, and it is difficult for them to deal with their problems in any less bloody way. Some manage to, though. There are ogres who, despite all they have suffered and their rugged, terrifying appearances, retain their gentle souls. Others lean hard into the stories of ogres and trolls who make porridge from the blood of their victims and prey on the unwary who disturb their solitude. Ogres remember more of their time in Arcadia than do other changelings, and most wish that they didn't. They are monsters who were made into monsters by other monsters. Their fey lords chained them, abused them, forced them to serve, to fight, and to suffer, feeding them the raw flesh of their lord's enemies and failed slaves. Ogres have strong flashbacks of fists, feet, clubs, and insults that never seem to fade over time. The typical ogre is large, brutish, ugly, and strong. This makes it easy for them to beat down and intimidate their enemies, and sometimes their allies. While ogres are not stupid, they are unwary and impulsive and can easily lose their composure at the drop of a hat, whether in social situations or in battle. Ogres of the Cyclopean kith possess the gift to smell the blood, which gives them the ability to smell things imperceptible to humans or other changelings. Farwalker ogres possess the elusive gift. Despite their size, they are incredibly stealthy and can survive in the wilderness like the mythological yeti. Ogres of the gargantuan kith are the spawn of giants and likewise have the gift of spurious stature. Once a day, 
A gargantuan ogre can grow to immense size, according to the strength of his weird. This is not a painless transformation, however, and when the gargantuan ogre returns to normal size, he suffers some injury. The gristle grinder kith possess terrible teeth that those who fall into their grasp should beware. Gristle grinder ogres can tear large, bloody chunks out of their opponents just by biting them. The stone bones kith are covered in an obdurate skin. Once per day, a stone bones ogre can armor himself in his weird, infusing his flesh with the strength of stone at the cost of his speed and agility. The water dweller kith are able to use the gift lie under the waves to see with perfect clarity in murky, lightless water and to hold their breaths for approximately 30 minutes. Wizened. Nothing moves some quite so suddenly as spite, and the fay have spite to spare. The changelings known as the wizened were not taken from desire or need or even whim. The wizened are people who were at the wrong place at the wrong time, and the fay decided that the human who had crossed their path would suffer for eternity for whatever slight the Fey imagined it had suffered by the human's mere presence. The wizened are put to work, though the exact parameters of their duties is never made clear to them, and they are punished harshly when they fail whatever standard it is that their Fey master didn't tell them was expected of them. Mortals become quickly infected by this spitefulness, and it twists them into smaller things. They learn to be quick and quiet, to avoid their master's punishments, Eventually, the wizened become so quick and quiet that they think they can escape. That's when the wizened's masters reveal their true malice. They make a game of letting the wizened think that they can escape. Some have even spent years in a happy illusion of human life, only for the fae to tear away the veil from their eyes and reveal to the wizened that the happiness and comfort they struggled for was nothing but smoke blown in their eyes by the fae usually followed by the sound of uproarious laughter. However, some do escape. They find their way out of the labyrinths. They escape the chains. They trick the tricksters and slip through the hedge, made into something that not even the wizen recognizes anymore, a shrunken or hunched thing with a misshapen nose, pointed ears, a naturally colored skin, and beady, mistrustful eyes. The wizen's memories of Arcadia what few they can recall are of spite and cruelty, both petty and grand. The Fay who took them got perverse delight from making the wizened the target of jokes that the Fay found humorous. Some wizened were even allowed to escape, only to be outwitted and humiliated by their captors time and again. When a wizened returns to the human world, they are smaller than what they once were. Sometimes this is physical, as in, they are literally shorter than when they left. Others only seem smaller, less substantial, their presence diminished, as if there is some force around them that compels people to not focus on them for too long. The wizards struggle against the spitefulness and mistrust hammered into their being by their masters. To separate themselves from the Fae, they try to be helpful, to create things of substance and value to others. They do the jobs that other changelings can't or won't do to try and rise above their origins as creatures warped by indolent malice. The wizened are extremely lithe creatures, both in and out of battle. With glamour, one of the wizened can channel their weird into their nerves and sinews, making them more agile and harder to hit. But they are also, as stated before, very spiteful creatures. Even if they aren't unattractive, they tend to have an aura of being unapproachable and suffer a disability to their presence as well as their social skills. Wizened of the artist Kith are blessed with the gift of impeccable craftsmanship, gaining the ability to support their works of art and crafts with glamour, making the process of creation much easier for them. The brewer Kith, thanks to their exposure to the strange liquors and decoctions of the Fae, learned the recipe for the inebriating elixir, giving them the ability to transform a single pint of any liquid into a potent brew at least as powerful as their own weird. The Chatelaine Kith appreciate that service often involves as much mastery as ruling. With the gift of perfect protocol, a Chatelaine wizen masters the nuances of etiquette and manners in any social situation he currently finds himself in. The Chirurgian Kith 
in keeping with their particular medical practice, can use the gift of the analeptic charm to do miraculous surgeries with even less than adequate medical tools. The Oracle Kith have gained the ability to look into the future with the gift of panomancy. With great effort, a wizened oracle can tell someone's fortune by whatever method they choose. The Smith Kith survived a forced apprenticeship in the forges of the Fey and gained steel mastery from it. A Smith wizard can perform seemingly impossible repairs or improvements to objects with the use of glamour, but they can only do so three times. On the fourth attempt, the item shatters. The Soldier Kith are the veterans of half a hundred goblin battles at the behest of their Fey Lords and gained the gift Blade Lore. A Soldier Wizard is considered a specialist with any bladed weapon, regardless of their actual experience with the weapon. And those were the seemings, and kiths, of Changeling the Lost. Changeling, unlike its predecessor, is a very dark game straight out of the box. It's closer to the older tales of fairies and elves as malevolent, chaotic entities who regard mortals as a diversion from their own immortality. In that, Changeling the Lost is more of an overt horror game than Changeling the Dreaming, though Dreaming could get pretty horrific depending on how it was played, especially with certain unseely changelings. Reading Changeling the Lost originally and rereading it for this video reminded me of two properties, Hellraiser by Clive Barker and Berserk by Kentaro Miura. The true Fey, like the Cenobites and Godhand of their respective properties are, either wittingly or unwittingly, summoned by their victims and then proceed to carry them away to their realm. In the Cenobite's case, it is to experience sensation and possibly be transformed into Cenobites themselves. Changelings can possibly become Fey under certain circumstances. The God Hand demands sacrifice of something dear in exchange for being mutated into an immortal apostle. And yes, I know the Big Egg wasn't immortal, Hashtag not all apostles, move it along. Changelings are turned into inhuman beings. Those trapped in the Cenobite's labyrinth, or hell, occasionally attempt to escape, hence the plot of the first Hellraiser movie. The God Hand just kind of cut the apostles loose, mutated both physically and mentally, to cause havoc on Earth, as they choose. And the Cenobites don't like it when people who open the Lambent configuration go running away and will seek to return them to eternal agony, much like the Fae and Changelings. The God Hand, on the other hand, are pretty laissez-faire about what their apostles get up to, but because their bailiffs tend to choose people of a desperate nature, it's pretty reliable that the apostles will succumb to their baser urges eventually, even if they try to resist, which would be a Fae who chooses to play a longer game. Or perhaps, a bit closer to the Changeling situation, is Guts the black swordsman and protagonist of Berserk, marked with the brand of sacrifice and doomed to fight against ghosts and demons until he finally dies and his soul is carried off into hell to complete the Eclipse Ritual. Overall, Changeling the Lost can be a pretty dark game in the hands of mature players who can go along with a nice little cosmic horror story as well as a generous helping of body horror. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Until next time.